And I, I also want to ask about this because I know that you do a great deal with uh, unions, uh, organized labor. Um, so something that I've been seeing more and more, I know this is mostly, uh, I'll admit, it's like a lot of it's meme culture, but I, I will say there's something to it, which is to say that uh, there's calls for a general strike or or just a, a rent strike in general, because I think one of the concerns that uh, I see, and I think it's legitimate, which is that with the stimulus package that's being passed by or presented by Congress, is that if every, say, every taxpaying American that's making less than, what, $75,000 a year, I think it is, um, they're going to get a 12000 or excuse me, a $1,200, not a $12,000, that'd be something, a $1,200 check, um, a one-time check, right? And one of the concerns is that that money is just going to go to landlords. It's just going to go to people uh, people that need to pay rent or, or mortgages or whatever it is. Uh, and... So there has been this call. I've been seeing more and more people actually entertaining the idea of a rent strike. Do you get the sense that that's happening in communities? And in what ways do you think mutual aid networks are a part of this trend? I mean, I think it's happening in some communities. This, not to be like a, I, I definitely don't want to crush people's dreams about these sorts of things. And I, I, I hate to be a naysayer about radical projects. It's, I think that there's a real toxicity in doing something like that, but. It's very anytime something happens, people call for things like red strikes or general strike. A general strike being um, everybody striking in every workplace um, that can. And so I think it's important to be real that just calling for those things or talking about them doesn't necessarily lead down the line. People have to do lots of work in, in red strikes that do happen. Um, and you know, I've written about this, and I was a housing organizer, and I've worked on red strikes in the past. Um, they take months, if not years, of people developing relationships uh, with the understanding that this is a hugely risky thing. In a workplace, there are some protections for strikes. It's pretty weak, uh, but there is labor protections from you know 200 years of labor organizing. There's not the same thing in tenant organizing. There are some protections for organizing, but it's it's actually a pretty precarious place to go on a rent strike. So it requires lots and lots of people. What makes a strike successful is that everybody does it, not of people or even 30 percent, even half is not a great look. And so um, it would require really, really massive examples. There are entire buildings that are going on rent strike right now in different parts of the country. And it makes absolute sense. And I, I think that organizers will obviously do everything they can to support them and people should do that. I think it's going to become even more important in the months that go down the line. And that that means a couple of things. One, it means that people in mutual aid networks are going to have to ask really hard questions about what they're willing to do to continue that mutual aid work, because that mutual aid work will mean supporting people on rent strike. Um, it's also going to have to mean having discussions about the politicization, the politicalization of people's experiences. You know, when people can't pay their rent, then it makes a lot more sense to go on rent strike. When you literally can't do it, then a rent strike is a much safer bet than just not paying your rent. If everybody else doesn't do it, then it actually is a much safer thing. So I think communicating about what that means and coordinating people like we talked about on a nationwide scale, locally, statewide, nationwide, making sure that people have those kinds of support resources. Um, the other thing is like communicating at a, a you know state and local level. Rent strikes for a lot of times can do things like push rent moratoriums or rent forgiveness um, at the state level because without it, things could start collapsing. So there's a sort of like social democratic response. That shouldn't be a lesson to people that their, you know, tenant organization isn't necessary, but it is usually an example of the kind of concessions that people have historically won along the way. Um, and so I think this is going to be true of workplaces too. This is going to be true of of transit and other things where and, and, and healthcare costs where people aren't going to be able to pay. People aren't going to have, you know, their income coming in. And what's going to have to happen is some form of, of ground up um, organizing in all those sectors, a, a broad based one. Uh, the same is true, like I said, with general strike is that um, it would be very, very hard, I think, right now to say, OK, hey, we're going to call for a general strike and then expect for it to magically happen. And those are the kinds of things that take years, if not decades, of people planning up for. But we are in a, a really a situation when people's experiences have accelerated so much, and, and that accelerates people's consciousness and the, uh, what their thought process is about how to solve problems. And so when people are able to communicate that and develop a certain amount of strategic um, kind of acumen about how we do those sorts of things, then it makes that a little bit more possible. So I think that when people are in mutual aid networks, 
people should go a little bit of step beyond about what people need. Okay, so we know you might need your prescription picked up or you might need your kids watched, but do you need to pay your rent? Well, I can't afford to pay it for you, so maybe I can support you in a different way. And I think that's how people start to expand out. I think I think the other thing that's really important here is that there are tenant organizations that have done this for decades. There are unions and labor organizations and, and what some people call alt-labor, meaning kind of alternative labor organizations that do work like this and people should connect with them because they know things that that you might not you know they know things like labor law or tenant law they know how to run a meeting or what kind of pressure tactics have worked historically or how to get people kind of motivated to doing that stuff so i think it's going to connect with those people as well there's going to be a lot of need this is the beginning of a really really major crisis and we do not know exactly how it's going to play out it would be really wrong to assume we know exactly what the consequences of this will be um, three or four or six months or a year down the line, but we know it's going to be really big either way. And so I think building relationships is the is the kind of step one that people do to survive those things. And then I think thinking about long term tactics and what people want to achieve out of it is what they need to be kind of pushing for next if they want to kind of see themselves remain vibrant as the like, real heat of the circumstances come down. Hmm. So you're saying that just because uh, Britney Spears called for a uh, general strike that it's not magically going to happen? Is that what you're saying? I, I like when Britney Spears calls for a general strike. I think that's fun. <laughs> thing. Um, if Britney Spears wants to do that, she can put up $10 million and stop a bunch of rent you know, rents do. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, I think, I think in a lot of ways, now is the time to call the question on people about their support organizations, things like that. Um, but again, I think that what mutual aid, I think, teaches people is that the most support we can have comes from below and from each other and not from someone above, whether an NGO or the, you know, um, Congress or Britney Spears. Mm. 